My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. I hope you want to make friends. I'm just trying to save you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. You know, we've now heard from two-thirds of the companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average this earnings season already. And they're going the way of the bulls, not the bears. There's been a lot of beats, few misses to speak of. And that's a big reason why the market's doing so well, even as it pulled back today. Dow dipping 46 points, s and edging down 0.04%, NASDAQ declining 0.11%. Didn't like that close action. I mean, but remember, this was supposed to be a bad earnings season. If anything, it's pretty darn good. Now, I know everybody's focused on J.P. Morgan swooping in to buy the carcass of First Republic for a pittance today. I'll talk about that later. But right now, I want to run through every Dow stock that's reported so far. I think the market's going to be a little rocky here in the days ahead. We've been selling some stock for the Chapel Trust. So what I'd like to do is dive into them, and you'll have some stocks to buy if the market indeed goes lower, particularly into the Fed or the employment number on Friday. Why don't we go in alphabetical order? And we're going to start with American Express. Now, this had a gigantic quarter with tremendous growth in the millennials and Gen Zs. Cross-border travel came back. I mean, you could do far worse than owning this one, even though people have been selling it like mad. I don't really get it, frankly. I I liked American Express. Amgen, well, I mean, I could go back and forth and bounce, but I think it's just easier to say it was a clear miss. And simply disappointing sales. Fair to middling situation at best, definitely one for the bears. I wish the keepers of the Dow had chosen a better representative of the healthcare industry than this one. All right, how about Boeing? Hey, not bad. I think it's finally done going down. You always want to buy go- Boeing when it ramps up production. It has more orders right now that it can handle, so you're getting that ramp up. Of course, it has problems, but the quarter was the first genuine beat in a while. I wish we'd go below 200 to get a better story. I would pull the trigger then. How about Caterpillar, which reported a gigantic beat, but failed to raise its forecast because it doesn't give one. That gave the bears free reign to make up stories about order cancellations, as that's what normally happens at this point in the business cycle. But they're forgetting about all that federal infrastructure spending that's going cat's way. I just came back from Washington after having lunch with infrastructure czar Mitch Landrieu. And I say I think cat could have huge orders next year. If it comes down, you got to get on board. Next, Chevron. They have the misfortune of reporting the same day as the Golden Boy Exxon. So even though Chevron's quarter was good, nobody cared because Exxon's was tremendous. We got a big beaten raise from Exxon. I think that's terrific. What's not to like? Coca-Cola? Okay, I say they just crushed it. As always, right? Uh, They came out with 12% organic growth when Wall Street was only looking for 10. Yes, a lot of that's inflation, but that's not Coca-Cola's problem. They had both tremendous pricing power and solid share take. A win's a win. Dow did okay. It wasn't perfect. We interviewed them on Squawk on the Street. I put it not bad, maybe. I, I know the estimates here are, are all over the map. I want to put Dow in the neither here nor there camp. Because while pricing on some lines was great, on others it wasn't. Goldman Sachs, I'm walking over here to tell you that they failed to deliver. And I point out simply it, it, it's been a tough, tough run for Goldman. And I don't even know if they're giving some serious thought to how to boost revenue until the IPO market and corporate finance come back. All of this small-time consumer banking stuff was just awful. Goldman bought this company, Green Sky, a home improvement lender at the top of the cycle for $2.24 billion. They just closed the deal 13 months ago. Now they want to sell it. What an ill-advised purchase. Definitely, this is a second win for the bears. Oh, while I'm over here, people didn't like IBM's revenue growth, even as in good earnings and decent hybrid cloud growth. They always brag, by the way, about how many big companies use them. And that may be true, but I think that the sale that the sales to all these companies may not be as big as the bulls would hope. I'm giving this one definitely to the bears. Now, Honeywell, this could be maybe, I don't know, one of the great stories of the entire quarter so far. It really stole, it's maybe even stole the show, frankly. The stock's been a dog this year after doing incredibly well for so long. Honeywell's aerospace business is accelerating. Its refining chemicals business has gotten better. Climate controls were good, too, as was automation. But I don't want to bury the lead. You buy this one for aerospace. It kind of mimics what you would get if you were to buy Boeing without the bad, well, let's just say without the misfires. Now, what do we make of, of Intel? It was hideous, but not as hideous as you might expect. 
Hey, that's okay. It allowed the stock to roar. CEO Pat Gelsinger tells me this is the long way to turn. I hope he's right because it's been a nightmare. I'm putting Intel in the could have been worse category. That's a win for the bulls to some degree. Now, if Johnson Johnson didn't have this ongoing asbestos litigation about talc, I hate to call it asbestos, but we're doing what the lawyers would do, the stock would have soared after the quarter. There was a terrific acceleration for Kenview, which apparently they're going to pull that deal maybe even as early as this week. Medical devices was sharply better than expected. But, uh, people can finally go to the hospital for non-urgent surgery. Total win for the bulls. But again, this talc asbestos litigation is very bad. They've got to get that into prepackaged bankruptcy and make it work. How about McDonald's? Oh, they had 12.6% same source sales growth. People are only looking for 9.3. That's an incredible acceleration. Unfortunately, the stock's having a parabolic move, like Chipotle. I don't know if I buy it. I never like to buy parabolic moves. I need a pullback. Merck ran into the print, and that run was justified because they shot the lights out. Incredible numbers from Keytruda, the revolutionary cancer drug that's turning a fatal disease into what I call a chronic condition. I think Keytruda may be one of the best-selling drugs of all time. People keep fretting about its loss of patent protection six years from now. Six years is a long time, but in the meantime, they bought Prometheus in order to be able to take, put some new drugs into the pipe. Microsoft stole in the earnings season along with Honeywell, okay? And this time it was done with Azure, its cloud division. And it, it had great numbers across the board from the per se business software to gaming divisions. We don't know much about what they'll do with their status in open AI, but I got to tell you, they're already using it to generate games. J.P. Morgan showed it can make money in any environment, including one with no investment banking, unlike Goldman Sachs, okay? J.P. Morgan was, a, it's like a vacuum for deposits fleeing the regional banks around the country. And just today, they bought the carcass of First Republic for a song. More on that later in the show. 3M missed again. Getting a little... Uh, getting a little agonizing, frankly. And it took charges galore. They laid off 6,000 people. Still, I don't see a way out of, the, of their situation until they put the groundwater and combat earplugs lawsuits behind them. I think it was a dismal quarter, but the stock didn't go down because dismal was what everybody expected. So I'm putting it in the OK category. Now, we own Procter & Gamble for the Chapel Trust, and it, it really showed that nice progression that we've been waiting for. Raw costs are starting to come down, but nobody mentioned rolling back their own prices to you, right? I think this was, a in line, uh, this was a line in the sand quarter for p and I bet we'll get beat after beat after beat going forward because those costs will keep coming down. So the company's going to get a lot more profitable because they're not cutting prices. Travelers was just OK. The big insurance companies, this kind of ho-hum, and it can't seem to get any traction with anybody. I was hoping for something more like Chubb when we had on last week, more growth. Travelers isn't expensive. Typical earnings, uh, good sales, um, uh, I don't know, Ha, <sighs> struggling here. Good earnings, okay sales. What do you do with travelers? I think you just say, no, thank you. Verizon gave you a very strong quarter when it comes to customer additions, which is what matters. I think the stock's pretty enticing with that 6.7% yield, even as I would put this one in the isn't as horrible category, which is enough to make people buy the stock, and that's why it's in the okay category with the rest of these. When you view United Health in a vacuum, the numbers were terrific and the forecast strong. The future earnings power shines through on a quarter like this one. I still like Humana more, and you know when the charitable trust has been a big position now, but I'm in, I'm in the presence of greatness when it comes to UNH. Finally, Visa reported its usual strong results. I thought the CEO got a little bogged down on their session talk, frankly. I'd own Visa because there's no financial risk, and it, it, it's an amazing way to play the reversion to sanity in the fintech space. Bottom line, that's a heck of a lot of wins, not too many losses. I know there's confusion here. When I say okay, I usually mean that the stock didn't go down after reported. When I say more work to do, it means, well, they've got to figure out a better narrative and get better sales and earnings. Uh, I would keep these in mind, though, this category in mind. When we get what I think could be a difficult week, we get a pullback, maybe because of the Fed, maybe because of employment. You need to know that there's some stocks there to buy. Let's go to Kendall in Georgia. Kendall. Hey, Jim, a big booyah from sunny Atlanta. Oh, good to have you on the show. Go to that. What's going on? Thanks. I first bought this stock back in February of 21, and uh, as it kept going up through the year, I added to my position four times through the end of the year. But then in 22, it started going the wrong way, and I, uh, I trimmed my position by half. Uh, my question is, 
what's your long-term view of PayPal? And it's just a time I should start adding well, to my uh, position. Okay, PayPal is an $84 billion market cap, and I think that it's got, uh, it doesn't have the franchise that I thought it had. It doesn't have the growth. I, too, got hurt, just like you talked about, this time for my travel trust. I feel like you. I say this is in the Don't buy. Don't camp. buy. All right, now we've heard from two-thirds of the Dow this early season, and I still think, as you can see, most of them are pretty good. Some are just okay, and these, they really need more work. Okay, uh, it's hard to tell whether we're going to have a bad week or not, but this is your buy list, not these, all right? Now, on Mad Tonight, after last week's busy week of earnings, I'm ranking the, the reports from four major tech companies and revealing a brand new acronym that could be worth watching. Then, could the magic get behind Disney stock? I'm going off the charts to find out, and it's a very controversial stock. Plus, I'm checking in with ResMed after earnings. Don't miss my exclusive with the CEO, so stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.